Good morning, everybody. It is so nice to be here. It's like coming home. Also, it's nice that Alpha's not here, so we can do lots of funny things. And go, was nice. We can play Rose, we can say, Rose, we made us good. So, it's lovely, lovely to be here. Um, my name is Brent. I am a chaplain in uh, the Royal Navy, and for those of you who don't know, I used to be the assistant. Um, can you believe it? Four years ago. Four years ago, and I time really flies. Um, I had a really fun job in the Navy. I was just uh, telling a story about um, some of my highlights in my week. So, this kind of week or two ago, uh, well, I get the privilege of going to the air traffic control tower. You know, the tower you know, at the end of a runway, that's where you get. Um, that's where I get to go and play. And uh, I was just saying, they haven't yet let me control aircraft. <laughs> So I, I keep saying, just tell me what you're saying, I'll say it. And they go, no, <laughs> done. And um, my favorite bit is, it's like a little child, but you know that, right? I get to turn the runway lights on and off. <laughs> so I'm always amazed, right? Because the runway lights are about 100 meters away, and it's a long runway. And when you turn it off, it goes off immediately. I know it probably doesn't fascinate any of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is lovely to be here this morning. I'm always pleased um, that Alvin asked me back. I'm always pleased that you said, Alvin, it's okay to have him back after the last time. <laughs> so, thank you very much. We are here this morning to worship God. And you've heard me say plenty of times, we have had different weeks, experienced different things. And some of us, come in really buoyant and happy and great. And some of us come, come in a bit shell-shocked. I took Amy for her first driving lesson this morning, so maybe a bit nervous. Uh, but some of us come in with real burdens. And you often hear ministers and priests say, when you come to church, let them leave your burdens at the door. I'm not sure sometimes that, that is possible. So we come in here with our burdens and things on our minds that weigh heavy upon us. And when we come here, all we start off by asking is that God would speak to us and that we may walk out of this place a bit lighter, knowing that God loves us and cares for us. There are a lot of scary things happening in the world and we can't ignore that. And we're going to be speaking about that later for a long time. So when we come to our call to worship and our prayer, we're going to uh, try and, as best we can, start off by focusing on God. We're going to start off with some scripture, and then we're going to pray. So we're going to start off our call to worship with Psalm uh, 46. And it says this, God, <clears throat> God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease, and how we need that now to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's bow our heads. Pray. 
Father God, we want to thank you for what you have done for us and with us. Even though at this moment it is very hard for some of us to give you thanks. But this morning we bring ourselves to worship you. This morning we want to fall deeper in love with you. This morning we want to strengthen our relationship with you. We want to strengthen our hope in you. And even though we bring our burdens, even though we may feel heavy, even though as we watch the news, we are wrapped with anxiety, we come here this morning in the hope that you would speak to us. That you may speak into and be with us in our home situations, our work situations, and any other situations that are on our mind. May you bless us with joy. May we be different because you are here and that we, in this moment, have put our trust and hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we continue in that attitude of worship by thinking, by, by, thinking, by singing two hymns that allow us again to focus on God's glory, God's love, and that He holds us. And the two hymns are praise to the Lord, followed by He will hold me fast. And we can sing for this. If you want to sit, you can do that. If I dance in the aisles, you can do that too. So um, let us stand and sing together.
slot um, and appeal towards the emergency relief in Ukraine. Um, also, if you receive the SPC, also if you receive the. Can you, is, the is the mic working? No. no. Uh, no. We're all not. Okay, start again. <laughs> um, right. Uh, the moderator has launched an appeal for the Ukrainian Relief Fund. Um, if you receive the SPC email on a Friday, you may have um, seen the details of this already. Um, already our church has released £60,000, which is being equally divided between Christian Aid and Tier Fund and the Hungarian Reformed Church Aid. And these are our church's relief partners and they're working um, to help those who are coming out of Ukraine as refugees and when they can to help those who are still in the Ukraine. So we have some PowerPoint slides which we're going to run now and that will give you a little bit more information about the appeal. Tragically, the bombardment of Ukraine and its people by President Putin's forces has continued and the fear and suffering of people living in the country has increased each day. The UN estimates a million people have fled the country so far, and many more are expected to follow. The moderator has then launched a special appeal towards the emergency relief effort to help people in Ukraine and those fleeing the conflict. PCI is immediately releasing £60,000 to be distributed between Christian Aid, Tier Fund, and the Hungarian Reformed Church Aid. The Hungarian Reformed Church Aid is providing humanitarian aid to Ukraine, as well as aid, medical help, and practical assistance to refugees crossing into Hungary. Christian Aid Ireland and Tier Fund are working with local partners in countries including Hungary, Slovakia and Moldova and hope to work inside Ukraine as and when circumstances allow. Pray for immediate ceasefire and an end to the war. Pray too for a de-escalation of the tensions between Russia and Western countries. Pray for all affected by the war, especially the grieving, the injured and those whose homes have been destroyed. Pray for people sheltering in fear, those fighting for freedom, and those protesting for peace. Pray for the large Christian community in Ukraine. Pray that they will know the Lord is with them in these difficult days, and turn to him for their refuge, strength, and hope. Pray too that they will be a witness to others in these days of distress and fear. Pray for those who have, been, who have recently fled or are fleeing due to the war in Ukraine or have been displaced within Ukraine. Pray they will find safety, shelter, water, food and medical help. Pray they will receive both emerging, emergency humanitarian aid as well as help in for the coming weeks and months. Pray for aid agencies and governments trying to help bring humanitarian aid to refugees and people living in Ukraine, including Christian Aid, Tier Fund, and the Hungarian Reformed Church Aid. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Berlin. And you thought you were only singing this morning. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, sorry about that, I didn't realise that the, the text was going to be so small. Um, so if you would like to make a contribution to the Appeal Fund, um, you can put a donation in an envelope and just mark it clearly, Moderators Ukraine Crisis Appeal, and put it into the offering box uh, on Sunday, or you can drop it into the church office to Edna on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday morning, or if you've got online banking, there's a way to do that. I think you have to note something at Ukraine CA as a reference for that. Um, so, yeah, the closing date for contributions is the 30th of June, so quite some weeks away. Um, and I say, if you want um, to look at the details of that again, just go back to your SPC email, which you will have received on Friday. Thank you.
We now turn to God in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this Lenten season. Thank you for knowing our hearts and our need for rhythms in our lives. And we ask that you might draw us into a deeper communion with, with you throughout these coming days. May these weeks leading up to the tragedy of Good Friday and the glory of Resurrection Sunday remind us of who you are, how much you love us, and that you have created us to be your followers. We pray for our world. Father, you created a beautiful world for us to live in and to be in communion with all of nature, with each other, and with you. You gave us the privilege of being stewards of your creation. But Father, how we have failed you in that task. Forgive us. Time and time again, you have rescued your people from the chaos and brokenness we have caused. So we pray that once again, your Holy Spirit will move in the hearts and minds of people who would seek their own advancement at the expense of others. People who traffic drugs, animals and people for their own gain. People who ignore the cries of others who are in poverty, oppression or distress. Father, show us how we can play our part in making our world a better place. And a prayer from Tear Fund. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine and for an immediate end to the conflict. Please bring comfort, safety and provision for those fleeing the war or trapped in their homes. We pray for wisdom for political leaders and we pray that in this darkness you would shine a light. We pray for our land. Gracious God, we pray for revival and renewal in our land. We pray for spiritual revival, bringing repentance, restoration, and a renewed focus on you amongst our people. We pray for economic revival, as businesses strive to recover from the effects of the pandemic, and people are able to rebuild their lives through new opportunities for employment. We pray for physical revival, to bring healing and hope to all those affected directly and indirectly by COVID-19. We pray for all those who serve our communities, for NHS staff trying to bring stability and effectiveness to our medical services, for our police service seeking to maintain order and lawfulness in our community, for the fire and rescue service at risking lives to bring people to safety, for schools equipping our children to achieve and thrive in a challenging world. We pray for our leaders, Loving Father, we seek your blessing on our leaders, MPs, MLAs and councillors, as they wrestle with issues that affect so many people in our communities. The trading issues associated with Brexit, the attempts to emerge from the pandemic back into some sort of normality, the question of how to support the refugees fleeing from the war in Ukraine, the frightening increase in the cost of living arising from rocketing oil and gas prices. May those who are in positions of authority take these responsibilities seriously and make decisions for the good of all citizens. May they realise their need for you and for your guidance in all the decisions they make. And finally, we pray for our church fellowship. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our church family here in Stormont. We ask you to bless everyone here this morning and those who are unable to be with us. We pray for the healing power of your Holy Spirit on everyone who needs to feel your presence this day. Those who are lonely or grieving, those who are suffering pain or illness, those who are caring for others, those who are anxious, those who are sad. May all our lives be full of your peace, love and grace as we seek to have a closer relationship with you. As we study your word and share what it means for each of us, May we all grow in our knowledge and understanding of you and of our Lord Jesus. And may our fellowship time together empower and strengthen us to show people Christ to everyone we meet in our everyday lives. We pray for our minister Alvin and his family, and we give grateful thanks for his faith and for his inspirational leadership of our worship and witness in Stormont. 
May he return from his spring break rested and refreshed. We welcome Brent back with us this morning and pray that he will find friendship, love and blessing in our fellowship. Especially, Lord, we pray for Brent as he leads our worship service. Open our ears, Lord, that we may hear the message he has for us. Open our minds that we can understand your word. And open our hearts that we may respond to your call. Be with us, Lord, as we go our separate ways after our service today. You know the situations and demands to which we return. Grant to each one of us your strength to enable us to cope with whatever is asked and expected of us in this coming week. But in all things we, we may know your loving presence to uphold us. In Jesus' name we ask these our prayers. Amen. The reading is taken from Daniel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 3, and then again from verse 17 to 19. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, by birth a maid, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that according to the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah, must be fulfilled for the devastation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Then I turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Verse 17. Now therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication and for your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O oh my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people bear your name.
Thank you, uh, Ronnie. Uh, let's pray before we uh, start. So. <clears throat> Father God, we, uh, as mentioned earlier, we come before you uh, in a time of great uncertainty. And we want to, more than anything else, draw comfort from you to know that everything is going to be okay. That you hold us and have us. So as we come to understanding your word, may we walk towards that. As we pray many times before, we ask that we would be brave enough to listen to you and be courageous enough to do what you've asked us to do. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this, as you know, I keep saying this as a guilty thing, but you know this is not my normal gig, right? I don't um, speak to uh, churches anymore. Um, so this is, it always feels quite strange. Um, so because usually my, my, when I do talks um, on Remembrance Day or maybe I get a chance in church, it's like maximum like seven minutes long. Okay. Some of you are probably going, oh yeah, we might have been that seven minutes and we're out of here. But I've managed to stretch it to eight, so I think we'll be okay. Um, so once again, uh, the world has changed. I kind of feel we were just getting out of COVID. We all know this, getting out of COVID. Woo! And uh, we're starting to be okay. And then uh, Russia in, invades Ukraine. And, and we can't ignore it, even if we tried. Because it's everywhere. It's on the news. People are wearing yellow everywhere. And it's really it's on the radio 24 hours. We can't ignore this. And we can't ignore some of the feelings we have, some of the conflicting feelings. Uh, people are scared. They is fear. Every place when I work, if I as the Navy, it's, it's, it's uh, work is normal. There's nothing much has changed. Everything has been done at a higher level. So, you know, there's nothing much has changed in our world. Uh, it's funny, there's a, there's a ship at the moment that's gone to the Arctic. And everybody's like, oh, you're sending a ship to the Arctic. Oh, there must be loads of troops on there. And we're like, We've been planning that for four years, <laughs> so it just happens to be the ship is going there. Um, you know, I'm getting personnel coming uh, to us and going, oh my word, I, I joined the peacetime baby, and we actually could be going to war. You know, so there's lots of fear. Yeah. And we can't, in this scenario, we can't just say, well, the answer is Jesus, isn't it? The answer is Jesus. That's not going to do. Um, we have engineers training for uh, their final exam at the moment in the chaplaincy, and they are, I mean, it's got a hard exam, right? It says aircraft engineering is really hard. Not that other engineering is not, you know, just saying that Jessica is going to be funny there. Um, but aircraft engineering is really hard. Um, and these guys are training, when I, when I walk in the door to put a fine line, I say, if you don't know the answer, just write Jesus on the sheet to be fine. Just write Jesus. And they look at me strangely because they don't get the joke, but I laugh, so it's funny to me. Uh, we can't just say Jesus is the answer. This is, well, Jesus is the answer, but we can't just say that. And if you look at that scenario, um, I think I'm left with a big however. Looking at all of the COVID come out and COVID restrictions going to where our world is at the moment, we have to be provided with another opportunity to show people Christ. SPC. See what I did there? SPC. We went in sync with that. You didn't know I was going to say that, but I did. I have it in my notes. Uh, we have another opportunity to show people Christ. We have another opportunity to be Christ. There's no doubt that during the pandemic, people were looking and still are looking for what is the meaning in life. That actually just gets more intensified. People are even looking at you, and they're definitely looking at me when if, if things start to happen. They're definitely looking at me going, where do you get your strength from? Where do you get your confidence from? And I, I, you know, I will be flapping like that. But 
and move back and say, well, I get my confidence from, from Jesus. Coming back to fear, uh, the sermon title for, the, for today is being fearless and using our not so secret weapon. I mean, we have to chat more when you see on the screen, chat more about that. So what does fear mean to you? And I want to traumatize you, and I want you to start thinking deeply about your most fearful moment, but I don't like frogs, right? I mean, I'm quite fearful of frogs. So when I was uh, working for Scripture Union, it's the things people do to you. I was working for Scripture Union, and I was happily sh- showering away. Um, it was an old shower, so what my friends did, they, they used a block of wood, and they wedged the sliding doors so I couldn't open them, right? And it was, you know, and the, the glass didn't go on the top of it. Unbeknownst to me, they, because it was frog season, spawn season, and they collected a couple of hundred, well, I'm going to say a couple of thousand frogs, because that kind of helps the story. A couple of thousand frogs, so I had buckets, and they threw it all in the shower with me. And I couldn't get out of the shower. I mean, I was terrified. I was fearful, traumatized, paralyzed, no doubt. Certain non Christian words came out of my mouth because I was really scared. Um, so we can all identify with fear. And Jessica, don't be fear I'm saying it. Maybe you laugh and I'm like, I was very really scared, Jessica. I was very really scared. Um, so, yeah, it's no doubt we all think of moments that have been terrifying. And people often describe fear as. Terror stand my heart. That's a pause body shock. Panic surged me. I felt blind. Frantic with fear. I'm sure you get the picture. When we're fearful, we actually don't know what to do. So, so what? Why are we talking about this? So what? The situation in Ukraine is not going to get any any easier over the next couple of months. We are going to start hearing more and more of a true story coming out from that country. We are going to hear more and more of the horrible nature of human beings and what they can do from both sides. And we're going to be fearful of what what could happen here. I'm reminded that as I talk, we're about to celebrate uh, this well, this year, uh, Falklands 40. So 40 years to start the Falklands War. And chatting to some of the veterans about what war does. And you can see the tragedy in their eyes. It's not long ago to this country experienced war and the atrocities of war and what that brings to us. And so as I think of that, and as we think of that, one of the things we do in light of that is that we have to know what we believe. What do we believe? We have to know where we get our strength from. We can't make the situation go away. We still want to function effectively for our family and our friends. And we, I've written my notes, still want to show hope. We want to show hope. And we want to bring hope bringers. Because that is what we are called to do. To be hope bringers. And you've heard me say it plenty of times. This church on the church in the corner. What does it look like for this church to be hope bringers? to this community, so that the person walking by is not just walking their dog, going, I'm passing the church in the corner, so the cyclists who meet you on a Sunday morning, very early in the morning in the car park, don't just use your car park, but they identify this place, this building, this community as hope bringers in the time when we are most worried, our community is most worried. What does that mean? And how we do that for me, it brings back to, we have to rely on our training. And for me, I, I can relate that to my training. And 
in a minute here. We were um, seen an example of that. We were uh, leaving the uh, uh, Middle East and we were going up the Red Sea. Uh, and uh, we're on our way home after a long bit of operations. We are, we are, we're going, we're steaming towards the Suez Canal. We can relax, but we have this thing where um, we have a, uh, a dress called, uh, uh, it's called a, a, a red ring. And so we're wearing our red ring in the Red Sea. It's kind of funny play in words. But anyway, it's kind of, we're relaxing, we're having a nice dinner. It's kind of formal thing. And um, we had a bit of uh, informal dinner because we have a guest on board. And I got to bed fairly late because part of Chapman's job was to entertain them with boring stories. But everyone else doesn't want to do that. <laughs> um, so I got to bed quite late. And the next thing, the general alarm goes off. Now, this is not a fun alarm. The general alarm is serious. Usually, when there's a practice, uh, when we practice firefighting, we practice flooding, not only flood the ship, we practice how to save the ship flooding. There's always for exercise, for exercise, for exercise, fire, 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 right? So we know there's a practice where we can kind of go and act practicing. But this time it was fire, 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 which means there's an actual fire. And I hear the general law, but the next, I'm going to sleep now, I'm two, three, one, one. The next thing that I am um, two decks up at my station, fully dressed, ready to go. Now, how did I get there? I do not know. How did I even know to put on my clothes? I do not know. I do not know. All I know is I'm there, ready to go, getting the boards out, getting the things I need to get out. And if you think of it, if I on that, the reason why I got there is at the moment I heard that alarm, right? I knew I knew to put on my fireproof stuff, my boots, get dressed, and get where I knew to be. And I was there. How did I do that? The training kind of got us into that, right? The amount of time to practice that in the fire, you know, practice that so many times, two or three times a day, sometimes we practice in the fire, so we know what to do. Same thing with a man on the board. Um, Standing in, the, standing in line for, for my food, chatting away, the general alarm goes off again, and we hear man of board, man of board, man of board, which means there's actually a man overboard. So people were standing in line for our food, people were just dumping their food everywhere, and we were off running. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing sort of, like, it's like someone brainwashed me, and your body just moves, right? Go and do that. But the, only, the only way that happens is by training. The only way it happens is we keep training, keep doing what we need to do to save others. There's this famous saying in the military, you may have read it loads of times, it says, train hard, fight easy. Train hard, fight easy. So we train really, really hard. Well, I eat biscuits, so other people train really hard. Um, and so when it comes to it, we know what to do. In this prayer of Daniel, he's in real trouble. He wants to pray for his people. His people have done really bad things. And he's trading again. What do we do when really bad things come our way? And for us, he's trading in this picture, in this, in this story. There's loads of death and loads of life experience. He's fought lions, well, fought lions, he's high up with dangerous, hungry lions. He's gone into the furnace of, of fire. He sat and disobeyed the kings and said, I will do it God's way, and I will still come out, okay? He stood in front of, in front of kings and important people. He said, important, uh, and he said, I will do it God's way. And here he's saying again in this prayer, he needs God. And this is what he says. If you look at verse 2, uh, in the passage of the prayer, he says, I, Daniel, understand this, understand from the scriptures. I, Daniel, understand from the scriptures. What did he do? He understood the scriptures. He knew what he believed. He knew who God was. He understood. I'm amazed, you know, I do the Bible in a year. I'm a week behind, but I do the Bible in a year. Uh, Time to go through the Bible in, in, in a year. And I'm amazed that Sometimes, even though I'm a week late or a few days late, that God speaks to me through those scriptures, to the situation I am in. But the only way that happens.
happens if I actually train myself to do that? Ask, what does God require of me? I, one of the things I have really struggled with is memorizing scriptures. I know people always say, why don't you put the scriptures in front of mirrors and write it on everything? I try to do that, but I still can't get past the third word. I really battle with that. But when I do do it, and when the thing, when I do memorize the scripture, it's amazing how much that scripture brings me comfort because it's the word of God. And some people think that that's a bit of, a bit of funny magic. It's not. It's the, the way the mysteriousness, that, that word, I don't know, but the mysterious nature of God, that is how it works. When we focus our minds on God and when we memorize scripture, God uses that. When we read the Psalms, this is the word of the Lord. When we think about all of those things that God has helped us to in the past experiences, all the things he's taught us, all the many sermons that I'm sure you remember from Alva and myself, word for word, when you do all of those things, you are in training and a housey. Verse 2, and it's in the version I have got, it says, Desolation of Jerusalem would last 40 years. The desolation, I like that word because it has, it shows you the picture. Daniel knew that there was going to be desolation. He knew that something was going to happen. He knew that there was pain and destruction on the way. He knew, but he also knew in the promise of God for the future. In verse 3 he says, pleaded with them in prayer. I like that word pleaded because it's not just asking. It is, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. I'm not going to go, I really need this to happen. This desperation is your last, is your last and only option. There's been loads of videos on, on YouTube on, on, on other social media platforms about Ukrainian Christians standing in a circle and praying and pleading with God to change their situation. That is where we need to be now. Not just waiting for something to happen. We need to train ourselves now and plead with God. I love it in verse 17. My version says, Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions now. And what he's saying here is that I, I'm going to persist in it. You, you may stay silent, but I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep praying. Verse 17, desolate sanctuary talks about a desolate sanctuary. And what Daniel is doing here is trying to be honest with God. Trying to be honest with where he was and how sad he feels. When we feel fearful, that is one of the things we have to do in our training. Jesus was honest with God on the cross, with his Father on the cross. In his darkest moment, he was saying, this is where I am. Help me. I feel fearful. The last thing I want to focus on, verse 18, he says, But because of your great mercy, Daniel knew the results of God's mercy. The joy, the peace, the hope, and the freedom. The joy, the peace, and the hope, and the freedom. Despite what they were going through, it's not just a sticking plaster but it's a way through when we are fearful. But I end up with two stories that really struck me as I looked at being fearful or fearless. Uh, both are of people who, uh, who were prisoners in concentration camps. And so when things like this happen, one of the things where I go to is I come to, what do other people do? What do other Christians do? And one, one, one Christian, he was given the job of uh, cleaning the equivalent of a septic tank. Now, I, this is a gentle one, right? Septic tank is when you flush the toilet, right? And all your bits and bobs go in this big tank. And the tank got stuck uh, quite often because there were thousands who were using this tank. And the only way this tank would get unstuck is if one person had to get in the tank and go and stir this tank, all right? So, I mean, you can pretty well imagine that it was not a pleasant job. And this would be a concentration camp. You weren't allowed to praise God. You weren't allowed to have Bibles or scripture or anything like that. 
You weren't allowed to do any of those things. Well, this is a Christian. And the God who had guided this man doing this job, he would stay rightly so about a couple of hundred meters away, however far away. And this Christian volunteered for that job. He wanted to be a servant, but also it was the only place where he could sing praises to God and no one would stop. Who's going to come stop him, right? Who's going to come say, I'm not going to do that? In the moments of fear and desolation, he found, I was going to use a really naughty word there, <laughs> he found a really bad, smelly place that none of us would hang on to go and worship God, to go and praise God, to go and pray. So that, he, so that when he left that place and he could go shower or whatever and left back into his horrible place where people treat him badly, he had praised God and that's where he got his strength from. Now the story, um, they, they did a lot of research, a lot of conversations with this man who had survived again a concentration camp. And uh, when they asked him, how did you survive? How did you manage to live in this camp after they beat people, they killed people in front of you, all horrendous things? You know, how did you manage to do that? And they asked him, who, who were the first people that you noticed lost hope or that died soonest? And he said a very interesting thing, he said the optimists. The optimists were the first people who broke. The first people to die. Or the first people that just lost. And the optimists, that's a bit strange. You know, what, what, what do you mean? He said, well, the optimists would always say, well, I'm sure by Christmas, someone is going to save us. We're going to be out here by Christmas. Christmas camp went, a few days later, by the new year, right? By the new year, someone is going to come and save us. By Easter. Surely by Easter. Or by the summer. And they kept putting timelines on it. And they were, the, they were the ones who kept putting timelines on it. But when those times came and went, that's the thing that broke them. And when they talked about it further, they discovered that the people that survived are the people they hoped for today, just to get through today. Again, as a thing about, I know what I believe in. I know where my faith is, and I am going to praise God now. I'm going to praise God here. Just for this moment. Therefore, in our fear, we need to train ourselves. We need to understand the scriptures so we can trust in Jesus. We need to know that things can possibly are going to get hard. But we need to keep pleading. We need to keep being persistent. We need to keep our hope in God's great mercy. This is the road that we need to travel if we want to have hope within our own lives and be hope bringers and overcome fear. As a community and society, again, we need this. Let's pray. Father God, we want to hope in you because our world is not in a good state. And we are going to hear some horrific things in the future. But we also want to be hope bringers that you have called us to be, to our community, to the people around us, to our families, so that people can put their hope and trust in you, in you and find your great mercy and find joy and hope and resurrection and all of that. Speak to us as we find ways to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before we sing our last hymn, let's stand together. And we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. And then we're going to sing uh, when I survey the wondrous cross. So let's stand. I've gotten a uh, sailor to start saying the Lord's Prayer. 
together uh, as, as a prayer, but also over one another. Kind of, kind of give me a bit weird when I say that, but they actually find some great confidence in that. So we say this prayer, but we also say it for others who maybe can't. So we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.